Welcome to our The World Brief program. Today, we have some captivating news stories lined up for you. First, we're celebrating the 55th anniversary of the Apollo 11 lunar landing with a series of exciting events, including a gala at the San Diego Air and Space Museum featuring astronaut Buzz Aldrin, a moon fest at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, and a special website by the Smithsonian Institution. It's a weekend filled with moon magic and nostalgia for space enthusiasts everywhere. In other news, we bid farewell to Cheng Pei Pei, the legendary actress known for her role in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Cheng, who was a trailblazer for female martial arts roles, passed away at the age of 78 after battling a neurodegenerative brain disease. Her legacy lives on through her iconic performances and the inspiration she provided to a new generation of filmmakers. Lastly, Toyota is making a bold move by committing to offer all its major models as hybrids in the US by 2030. This strategy comes as the electric vehicle market faces uncertainties and the US government adjusts its EV sales targets. Toyota's focus on hybrids aims to capture the growing interest in eco-friendly vehicles while navigating the shifting landscape of the automotive industry. Please stay tuned for detailed coverage. Associated Press The Cosmos is aligning to celebrate the 55th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing with a full moon this weekend, adding a celestial touch to the festivities. Buzz Aldrin, the last surviving member of the Apollo 11 crew, will headline a gala at the San Diego Air and Space Museum, joined by astronaut Charlie Duke, who was the voice of Mission Control during the historic event. For those unable to attend in person, there are other ways to commemorate the occasion, such as watching the new film Fly Me to the Moon, starring Scarlett Johansson or exploring the Smithsonian Institution's special Apollo 11 website. NASA's Kennedy Space Center is hosting a moon fest, and Houston's Johnson Space Center is also celebrating. Armstrong and Aldrin's landing on the Sea of Tranquility remains a unifying moment in history with their spacesuits and return capsule on display at the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. The Apollo program, which landed 12 astronauts on the moon, will continue with NASA's Artemis program, aiming to send four astronauts around the moon next year. BBC. Chang Pei Pei, the pioneering martial arts actress best known for her role in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, has passed away at the age of 78 in San Francisco. Chang, who starred in the critically acclaimed Come Drink With Me in 1966, became an iconic figure in the wuxia film genre, inspiring directors from East Asia to Hollywood. Her family revealed that she had been battling a neurodegenerative brain disease since 2019. Chang's career spanned over six decades, during which she played numerous roles as a fearless swordswoman, influencing films like Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill. Her most notable role came in 2000 as the villain Jade Fox in Ong Lee's Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, a film that won multiple awards and became the first foreign language film to gross over $100 million worldwide. Chang's final role was in Disney's live-action Mulan in 2020. Her family has requested donations to the Brain Support Network in lieu of flowers. Nikkei Asia Toyota Motor is doubling down on hybrid vehicles in the U.S. as uncertainty looms over the electric vehicle EV, market. At a recent test drive event at Toyota's North American headquarters in Plano, Texas, half of the 26 models featured were hybrids, with plans to offer hybrid options for all key models by 2030. The popular Camry sedan has already gone hybrid only, and the new Crown Signia SUV will be sold exclusively as a hybrid. Toyota's hybrid sales in the US surged 66% in the first half of the year, and hybrids now account for 33% of its North American vehicle sales. The U.S. government's revised goal for EV and hybrid sales has provided a boost for Toyota, which aims to increase its electrified vehicle sales to 80% by 2030. While Toyota is also making strides in the EV market, its strategy may hinge on the outcome of the U.S. presidential election. Former President Donald Trump, who opposes current EV mandates, could influence Toyota's operations if he wins in November. New York Times Long seen as punching below its weight, Canada, the world's second-largest country by area and one of its seven wealthiest economies, has committed to meeting its NATO pledge to significantly bolster military spending by 2032. The commitment, which NATO is urging all alliance members to make, is fraught with challenges. Critics argue that the timeline is too long, though it is actually compressed when considering the slow pace of global military hardware production. Canadians, like many in the developed world, are more concerned about housing and public services, making it difficult to justify the allocation of billions to military equipment. Additionally, with elections expected before October 2025, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's defense pledge may not hold if he loses to his conservative opponent, Pierre Poilivre, 
who has already stated he would not adhere to the spending target, citing economic constraints. BBC. The EU has celebrated a historic pact with Serbia on lithium mining, marking a significant step for both Serbia and Europe. On Tuesday, Serbia reinstated Rio Tinto's license to mine lithium in the Jedar Valley, a move that Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz praised as crucial for Europe's economic security, particularly for the auto industry's transition to zero-emission vehicles. The Jedar project could provide up to 90% of Europe's current lithium needs, reducing dependence on China. Despite the economic promise, the agreement has sparked controversy within Serbia, where environmental concerns and a perceived lack of transparency have led to widespread protests. President Aleksandr Vucic assured that the project would be transparent and environmentally safe, but opposition parties remain skeptical, fearing Serbia will be exploited to supply lithium for electric vehicles that most Serbians cannot afford. The protests are likely to resume, reflecting ongoing distrust in the government's assurances. South China Morning Post the Communist Party of China has expressed condolences to Vietnam following the death of its leader, Nguyen Phu Trong, who passed away at the age of 80 due to old age and illness. Trong, who served as General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam since 2011, was praised by the Chinese party as a good comrade and a friend who helped elevate bilateral ties to a community of shared destiny with strategic significance. Despite unresolved disputes in the South China Sea, China views Vietnam as a priority in its neighborhood diplomacy and aims to strengthen political mutual trust and cooperation. Trong's death comes amid political upheaval in Vietnam, where an anti-corruption campaign has led to the resignation of three of its top five leaders. During his tenure, Trong fostered close ties with China while also advancing relationships with the United States and its allies, positioning Vietnam as a key player amid U.S.-China trade tensions and geopolitical shifts. Associated Press, Venice city officials recently defended their controversial day tripper tax, which generated 2.4 million euros during a test phase this summer. Over 29 test days, the 5 euro tax was paid 485,062 times, primarily by Italians, followed by US, German, and French visitors. Critics claim the tax failed to deter arrivals, but Mayor Luigi Brugnero emphasized the lack of alternatives. Exemptions included hotel guests, local residents, and visitors under 14. The tax aims to combat Venice's overtourism, with annual arrivals estimated at 25 to 30 million. City officials plan to extend and possibly increase the tax next year, viewing it as a cultural revolution that provides precise data on visitor numbers. Spiegel, Arkady Valas, co-founder of Yandex, has a compelling story of navigating the geopolitical tumult between Russia and the West. After voicing opposition to the Ukraine invasion, he sold Yandex and relocated to Amsterdam, where he now leads Nebius, a company focused on AI infrastructure. Vala's aims to help Europe close its tech gap with the US and China by leveraging the expertise of hundreds of Russian tech specialists who fled their homeland. Despite past sanctions and accusations of spreading Kremlin propaganda, Vala's is determined to build something new in the West. He envisions Nebius as a key player in the AI industry providing essential computing power to developers and aiming for rapid growth and profitability. Associated Press, a United Nations panel has called for the release of Alash Bialyatsky, the Nobel Peace Prize-winning founder of the Belarusian human rights group Vyasna. Bialyatsky has been imprisoned for three years amid a severe crackdown on dissent following the disputed 2020 election that extended President Alexander Lukashenko's rule. Charged initially with tax evasion and later convicted of smuggling and financing activities that disrupted public order, Bialyatsky's detention is seen as a violation of his rights to freedom of expression and assembly. The UN Working Group on Arbitrary Detention emphasized the need for his release, especially given his deteriorating health and harsh prison conditions. CNN Stocks have been on a wild ride this year, with the S&P 500 soaring over 16% so far. However, recent political chaos and a tech outage have thrown the market into turmoil. Investors are grappling with an assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump, speculation about President Joe Biden potentially dropping out of the election, and attacks on big tech and chipmakers. The Dow fell over 430 points, or 1%, on Friday morning as a global computer outage rattled investors. The S&P 500 and Nasdaq Composite also dipped around 0.6%. This week has seen stocks oscillate, with the S&P 500 hitting a record high on Tuesday but experiencing its worst two-day decline since April by Thursday. The Nasdaq had its worst day since 2022 on Wednesday.
Investors crave stability, and with about 100 days left until the election, market mayhem seems to have set in. Despite the turbulence, financial strategists advise against making short-sighted trades based on election predictions, suggesting that the broader economic trend is a more reliable indicator for investors. Associated Press Adidas is revising its campaign for retro shoes inspired by the 1972 Munich Olympics after facing criticism from Israel. The German sportswear company had been promoting the SL72 shoes, describing them as a timeless classic. However, Israel objected to supermodel Bella Hadid being the face of the campaign, noting that 11 Israelis were murdered by Palestinian terrorists during the Munich Olympics. Hadid, whose father is Palestinian, has been vocal in criticizing the Israeli government and supporting Palestinians. In response to the backlash, Adidas issued a statement apologizing for any distress caused and announced plans to revise the campaign. The Munich Olympics saw members of the Palestinian group Black September break into the Olympic Village, killing two Israeli athletes and taking nine more hostage. All nine hostages and a West German police officer died during a rescue attempt by German forces. New York Times The Biden administration's recent proposal to cap rent increases has reignited the debate on housing policy. The White House called on Congress to pass legislation requiring corporate landlords with over 50 rental units to cap annual rent increases at 5% or lose federal tax breaks. While the proposal is unlikely to be addressed this year due to Congress being in campaign mode, it has sparked significant public reaction. Tenant organizations and progressive leaders have welcomed the news, but economists, Wall Street analysts, and landlord associations have criticized the limits as counterproductive. Robert D. Abrokesmith, president of the Mortgage Bankers Association, argued that increasing the supply of affordable rental housing is a better solution than politically motivated rent control proposals. The policy would affect about 20 million rental units in the country, roughly half of all rental properties. Associated Press, a Tunisian court has sentenced presidential candidate Latfi Mrehi to eight months in prison and banned him from contesting elections for life, marking the latest effort to suppress opposition to President Kais Saeed ahead of the October election, which critics deem a farce. Mrehi was convicted of vote buying during the 2019 election joining a slew of government critics facing legal action for alleged misconduct. Mrehi, the 65-year-old leader of the Nationalist Republican People's Union, also battles money laundering charges, which he denies, and was previously charged under an anti-fake news law targeting Saeed's detractors. His lawyer, Omar Ben Ismail, plans to appeal, potentially allowing Mrehi to remain a candidate. Despite the court ruling, Mrehi's representative has already initiated the paperwork required for presidential candidacy. The election authority confirmed this move as Mrehi becomes the first candidate to receive a lifetime ban amid growing authoritarianism in Tunisia. Associated Press, Tiger Woods concluded his season by missing the cut at the British Open for the third consecutive major, shooting a 6 over 77 at Royal Troon. Woods, who had set a record by making the cut for the 24th consecutive time at the Masters earlier this year, struggled throughout the tournament. He began with a 79 and never seriously contended for the 36-hole cut. His round included a double bogey on the second hole and only one birdie, before the wind even picked up. Woods announced he would not play again until December at his Hero World Challenge in the Bahamas and the PNC Championship with his son. This year marked the first time since 2019 that Woods felt healthy enough to compete in all four majors, though it was also only the second time in his career that he missed the cut in the last three majors. Associated Press at least three people died and up to 40 others remain missing after a boat carrying around 80 Haitians caught fire while attempting to escape to the Turks and Caicos Islands, according to a government official. Civil protection official Jean-Henri Petit reported that the Haitian Coast Guard rescued at least 31 people. The dead included the boat's captain, as confirmed by police spokesperson Arnold Jean. The fire was likely ignited by two drums of gasoline that came into contact with rum and whiskey passengers were drinking, according to a witness. The migrants were headed for Providentials in the Turks and Caicos Islands. The Haitian police are currently searching for the trip's organizers and have launched an investigation. This tragic incident occurs amidst escalating violence and political instability in Haiti, with armed gangs taking control of police stations and the main airport, leading to the displacement of nearly 580,000 people, as reported by the UN. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, 
think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email. Turn on the TV screen See the world unseen China is on the news tonight History in the spotlight Scroll through my phone again Find out where to begin Stories from the east to west Learning from the very best News in China every day Learning in a fun new way From the cities to the farms Feel the heartbeat, feel the charm Connecting hearts through every